Good morning everyone, welcome back to my video. So I'm back on this piece. Now for me, it's only been about 15 minutes. After I finished filming, I finished stitching the little beehive down and I ironed out the red and took my photo. And I'm just so, so pleased with the way that that came together that um, I decided just to put, hit play again and start working on the bottom. I also stitched down this fringe. Now that fringe was dingle dangling everywhere. I don't know if you can see it. There's little beads hanging off of that satin ribbon. And they were flipping around everywhere, driving me nuts. So I've just stitched them down with a little stitch. So now it feels like they're not gonna get caught and um, potentially break. So I've had an idea too, and I'm just like, busting to workshop it. My phone's buzzing. It's the dog wash lady. She's coming Wednesday. So for you, it's Thursday. For me, it's still Monday. So the dog wash lady is coming Wednesday to wash Pepper and Bandit, which is perfect because then Friday we hit the road and start taking my pooches to their holiday homes. So Pepper first off to Harvey Bay and then um, what am I trying to do? I'm getting sidetracked and then band it on the following Monday. No, I don't need that. Now I also, I, I want to put some little plants in here. So I'm just going to grab the cheesecloth. I should have thought this through a little more, but I didn't. Just want to grab a little bit of cheesecloth to give me a little bit of texture that's a little bit dark and I've had this idea I've been trying to work out what I take with me to stitch on the cruise so I want something that's substantial something that's you know will keep me busy I've got 13 days that's a lot of stitching and my husband likes to sleep in so I've got probably three hours every morning is what I seem to average at home to stitch. So I tend to find a nice sunny spot on the boat. I'm just going to pull that down there and um, take a seat and stitch. And then if he wants to do something in the way of a, a course or, you know, go off and do a wine tasting or whatever, my first preference would be to go and stitch. And by then I've usually found a few like-minded folks who are crocheting and things like that. So before I know it, I've started a gang and we're all meeting if we feel like stitching in a certain location because we very quickly stitches, crocheters, crafters find not only each other, but they find a good spot to do it. <laughs> so lately well it's been a few years since i've been on a cruise boat due to the whole COVID thing um it's always been at the front of the boat there's usually a library or a quiet area and they'll have a bar in there for evening drinks but there's a lot of seating and you're watching the boat go forward and um so great ocean views you get that bright light of a morning which is great for eyesight and stitching so I tend to find that those are the locations you know for the first few days I will cruise around the boat looking for the best spot and often you'll find people in spots crocheting stitching whatever so I tend to go up to them and say hey there's a few of us that have got together and we're at such and such location most mornings if you'd like to join us. So before we know it, there can be 20, 30. The one cruise, we had like 40 women every morning there <laughs> stitching and crocheting. It was fantastic. Really, really fun. So, yeah, and if there's any activities that are a little bit creative, we find that we're all in them together. I think one, one cruise we were given a heap of yarn by the cruise ship and we were making crocheting squares that were later joined into blankets 
and given to the community of Vanuatu. Anyway, um, the young lady that was sort of watching over us that worked on the boat, the cruise girl, she she was a little bit out of her depth and not only did she not know how to crochet, but she, she had hundreds of squares. She, and she made a comment about it. She said, oh, I just bring the yarn and everyone makes a square, so many stitches by this. So, and it was knitting actually. Here's some knitting needles. So it was a big box of needles and wool. Anyway, I started sort of quizzing her, you know, what happens with it, you know, and she said, oh, everyone does these squares and they all get stitched together. And I said, oh, wow, how many blankets do you do? And she goes, well, to be honest, I've got so many squares in my um, quarters that they really need to be put together and I really don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, oh, so everyone's making them for you in mass. And she said, oh, by the end of a cruise, there could be 200 squares given to her. And I said, and they're not in blankets yet? She goes, no, not really. She said, I've got boxes and boxes of them. And by that time, we'd gathered probably 25 ladies. Some were doing their own thing. They were sitting doing cross stitch or something like that. They weren't knitters or anything like that. So I sort of looked at all these women. I said, ladies, we could, we've got many hands here. We could do something. And we were on a 12-day a cruise. So it's not like we didn't have time. So we said to the young girl, just bring them up. She goes, oh, I'll need a little bit of help. I'll get the boys to help. I'm like, right, eh, whatever. Anyway, she turns up the next day. I think it was about 11 o'clock was our little one hour a day routine. And then there was shore time, so it was barely 13 days. And um, so probably only about five days actual time. And oh my goodness, up come all these bags of them. And it was a case of, uh, we're gonna need more time. Oh, but we've only got allocated so much time per hour. And I said, well, look, do you trust us to just take control of it? And we will have you blankets by the end of it. And she was like, oh yeah, that'd be great because I don't know what I'm doing. You know, the little story she told us. So pretty much, we divided ourselves into groups and there was a group that were not crochet and were not knitters so they divided it all up by size because you sort of got to have your sizes of your squares you know similar so that it's not a mess and um, then within that there was color pattern sort of clusters and within the end of that session we had piles of like squares and colors ready to be um, sort of stitched and then there was a few of us like I'm not a knitter but I can hand sew so I was part of the um, stitching all the squares together so as long as they kept them coming in piles so that we didn't have to think too much, we could just grab a chunk of them that suited our blanket and go for it. The young girl, she was just like, oh, wow, this is exactly what we needed. And she said, oh, there's still more. I'm like, well, you better bring it because we're trying to put together a whole blanket. We need to know if, you know, if I'm two squares short and you're sitting on a bag of squares that might have the two I need to finish it, you better go get them. So off she toddles, she brings back the same quantity again. So we literally had hundreds, which is what you need. It was very much time to, you know, put this quilt together, these blankets together. So we um, all got some chunks and of course then your hour is gone. And I think it was two days of shore opportunities where you can get off the boat. So that activity was just not scheduled but there were a heap of ladies there that honestly they don't go ashore they they stay on the boat for physical reasons they just weren't weren't able so I said to the girl I said oh 
can we sort of put these somewhere where we can access them outside of this time slot that P&O's, you know, given us? And um, we'll keep working. I said, there's a heap of girls here that aren't going to go ashore. So, and are just sitting here, you know, waiting for something to do, idle hands. She was humming and hawing and humming and hawing. And I said, well, who do we speak to that is the boss? Who's, who's your boss? So she said, oh, it's just the cruise director. You know, the one that's always bouncing around on the microphone all the time, introducing activities, revving up the crowd, that one. And he, he seemed lovely. I chatted to him occasionally, not, not a lot, but he seemed really nice. So anyway, she had a walkie-talkie on her hip. And I said to her, is that an opportunity to call him in? And she said, yeah. So we'll get him here. We girls want to have a meeting with him. <laughs> it was really funny. So anyway, she gets on the walkie-talkie, whatever his name was. Can you please come to the library um, if you have a moment? So anyway, he comes bopping along. Hello, ladies. You know the, how they go. So he goes, oh, looks like you're all busy. Giggle, giggle. I'm like, righto, bucko, this is what we want. We want to have somewhere where these can go, that the girls can pick them up and carry on, or better still, can the girls take their task that they're currently working on and take it with them to continue stitching? And he sort of thought about it. He goes, well, it shouldn't be a problem. Um... You know, if you're going to, he didn't say this, so I could see he was thinking it. If you're going to steal a piece together crocheted blanket, well, you probably need the blanket more than anyone else if you feel that's the case. But anyway, the, the girls, they looked like a good bunch. So I assured them that it was not going to be an issue. But if the women could have their pile of squares and then sit down and work on it, we could move mountains for you. And I said, this is an hours thing. This is going to take hours. But with the few little get-togethers scheduled on this cruise, we're just not going not to get there. So he was like, yep, I can see that. So anyway, long story short is we all headed off with a pile of squares that was suited to our particular blanket and um, we would meet back in two days time to hand in what we'd done and pick up more supplies. Now, if anyone needed additional squares or supplies, um, the girl was going to make herself available to be contacted via Happy Pants, we call him, the chap that was sort of her boss. And he would radio her, find her where she is on the ship and would meet at the library with whatever was needed. So, yeah, long story short, I think by the time we finished, we had about 22 blankets stitched together and all that was left in the um, pile of squares were just random ones that were just not right. They were out of whack or it's just some we couldn't use, to be honest. It was a bit hodgepodge work so and we still had time so what ended up happening is a heap of the ladies who were really talented um, knitters they got these weird little squares and they were able to cast onto it I think that's the right word I'm not a knitter so it was a little bit above my pay grade they were able to cast onto them and square them up or get them at least to the right size so i don't think we got any more blankets made after that point it was really just uh, fixing up the the pieces that were left so yeah it was great absolutely fantastic and here's the kicker here's the kicker where we're like at day 10 and we're pumped. We have a gang going. We're mass production blankets. It was really cool having a ball with these girls. And the lady who was our little 
hostess, she comes down the one day and she goes, oh, I've got some bad news. And I'm like, oh, what now? She said, oh, P&O head office in the UK have sent a email through this morning announcing to the whole group that these types of activities where yarn is to provided to make something for community by, who's that brand? It starts with P, is it Patton? P-A-T-O-N. Um, they were providing it for free to p &O for people like us to, you know, do something with. Well, they had decided to cease cease supplying and of course P&O were really just the the providing of the people and also a location of which that they could drop them off which was Vanuatu on this particular cruise or this particular area the South Pacific where they went to other islands were possibly so it was really sad in the end but it's sort of I don't know it worked out too because we had all of these squares that just needed a gang or a gaggle of women because <laughs> it was more giggling than stitching sometimes. Just needed a group of women to just finish it off, get them sorted, and that cleaned up the problem for this young girl who was really out of a depth. She and she was a sweet thing. She was like, I've always wanted to learn to crochet. And there was a lady there that was crocheting. She was doing socks. And she says, well, I'll teach you. So in the time that we were together with her in the designated time slots for this activity, the young girl sat there with this lady and learnt to crochet. It was really good. So by the time she finished... She was crocheting and she had a little kit that she'd picked up from somewhere. I think she'd picked it up at Brisbane when they were in port here. She'd gone somewhere and got this little starter kit. And she'd had it for a little while and it was just beyond her. Crocheting can be a bit that way. Sometimes you need to see it to get it, crocheting. Where knitting is a little bit simpler, I think, and you can sort of just follow a pattern once you get the basics of it. But crocheting can be a bit a bit crazy, especially when it suddenly starts talking about doubles and trebles and uh so this young girl, I think it was probably at least four sessions we had where it was formal. So she was sitting there. I, I, I even think there were days when she had a day off and she turned up in her civilian clothes and just sat in amongst the group crocheting. So it was really good. It was such a shame to hear that um, the little program was going to come to an end because of, yeah, the donation from the yarn company was coming to an end so yeah really sad really really sad so it's fun when something like that happens anyway my idea what am I going to do while I'm on this blooming boat locked up for 13 days with no craft room I have a small carry-on suitcase that I've allocated to my entertainment. I told my husband I'm going to downgrade my big suitcase to this little small one so that I can take some bits and pieces. I was thinking I needed to keep it really small, my project, and just have something that was literally needle, thread and fabric. But now that I'm going to take a little suitcase, the girl is going to pack a little more. I know, Christine, you're laughing because Christine mentioned that she takes a second car. She took a second car on holidays to help carry some of her craft supplies. <laughs> and I've done that too. I've filled a whole boot of the car, the trunk, if you're in America and you're wondering what I just said, the trunk full of containers 
to make journals, scrapbook journals, junk journals, because there's so much you need with those. And I was making about seven. So I took the whole lot. And of course, they're all different themes. So I had to pack a heap of gear. I've totally jiggered that bullion knot. I've missed the stem. I don't know if you can see. See the bullion knot where my needle is and see the stem? I completely missed it. That's because I'm about to tell you my idea. So, if you recall, if you've been watching a while, I have a very old um, embroidery transfer of a peacock. It is old. And I found it in a um, sewing basket in my mum's room when I was tidying up a little bit in her sewing room. Mum didn't have a lot of bits and pieces in her sewing room because she really just did clothing for us kids. And then as the years went on, that really ceased and it was just a bit of mending. She's not a prolific um, stitcher or crafter like me or my grandmother was. So in her little childhood sewing basket was this um, peacock. I do have it beside me, I think, in a box. I will grab it out, but I just want to keep stitching. Otherwise, I will really get sidetracked if I put this needle and thread down. So I want to keep stitching and talk through my idea with you. Now, I want to do, I've got some spare pages in my journals of stitchery from the first half of last year when we were getting prompts and just stitching a page, like it might be a bird or a butterfly, whatever the prompt was from Rachel and Sarah. And I have some additional pages that don't have um, anything. So... What I'm thinking is featuring the peacock. Now, the peacock was going to be on the French garden, but I just, I don't know, I just haven't found myself being drawn to do it for some reason. And I think I realised what it is when I did the video for this little beehive yesterday. I'm oh, not yesterday, today for you. You watched it yesterday. Is this scene here... I really want to explore a little more. So the materials I use, the styling, the colors. Yeah, I really want to, and even that beehive, I really think that the tone that I've got happening here with the gold thread, the gold beads, all of it would make for a beautiful scene around my peacock. Now the peacock, won't be the traditional colours. He's going to be all of the tones that you see in this little section here, which was sort of always my plan. The French garden we know is in those reds and, and browns and things like that. So I think the reason I was holding back on that piece and the peacock is that it's quite limiting with the red, it really is not a red. Peacocks aren't red. They're not even cream, but there is white peacocks. So cream, I can sort of pitch. Red, not so much. And I felt like the feathers of the peacock really could be embellished with beads and crystals and, you know, really go to town, but the French garden is not that piece. And when I did this video of this piece, I was like, oh my goodness, I could just take neutral palette and my peacock and I could just go to town. And I think this fabric here that was what sold me. This here. And I don't have a lot of it, but this would be enough to create some portions in the background. So, what I'm going to do is start putting together, and this was another piece of lace. This is really old. 
some little elements that can go with me um, building up a little kit if you will of goodies that can do a peacock so that's going to be my project I'm so excited I feel like I finally got a direction now what am I doing here I need I need what do I need I need some pebbles some stones I need those blues mm. anyway sidetracked I need where are there they are I want to have a look in here and get down a few fairly white boulders Some little ones, maybe three. That's pretty. It's got a real shine to it. Just a few pebbles. They're very big. Has that ever stopped me? There's a little one. So yeah, there you go. I've figured it out. And what I'm going to do, put the lid on it, Corinne, before they go everywhere. I'm going to create a champagne neutral lace gold peacock. There you go. I've done it. That should be quite an intense piece, as in a lot of work to do. That should keep me busy. So now I have... What's today, Monday? I have a week to bring together all of the elements that I'm going to need to take with me to do this peacock. So what I'll do, there's another little piece of that fabric. I might just pop that on the pile. I'm going to start gathering supplies. That needle probably won't go through those stones. So that's the plan. I think that will keep me very much occupied. And it would be a lovely piece to add to my Journal of Stitchery Volume 1 when it was just general. I think there was a prompt bird. Yeah, there was. Because I did the um, hummingbird. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like it because I was thinking of taking Japanese inspired fabrics. Oh, that is the end of that needle. It's just too big. Japanese inspired fabrics. Maybe I will take a bit of that. I don't know. But I think it'll be too quick and simple. I guess my fear is that I will finish whatever I had taken and then be pacing around going, well, what now? And the great thing is I'll be visiting some um, fabric slash thread stores in my travels. I have a little list now, which will be super fun. So if I did find I needed some little supplies for my peacock, I should be fine. What am I putting in here? My two big size. These rocks are pretty big. These boulders. I'll soften them down with some little beads. So that's it. That's the plan. Loving the idea, absolutely loving it because that peacock has been burning a hole in my brain. I love it when I focus on 
like a bird or something and I go a little bit abstract because you can break all the rules it doesn't have to be you know I can do a little bit of ribbon embroidery in it and what I'll do is when I do sections or you know work little bits I can film it and I won't need to upload it because I'll just gather the footage for those 13 days and then when I get back I can edit it into a series for you so you'll have this peacock inspired video series so not only do I get a project but I also continue with something for you guys to watch otherwise I think I'd be sitting there doing a little bit of Japanese boro stitch and I'd get boro boring Gee, there's some big rocks in front of this birdhouse. Not birdhouse. Oh my goodness, I got peacocks on the brain. That's my problem now. This is a classic case of I head out to do a task and head off in a different direction. Like I was saying in the last video with the pool toy. Now I got peacocks on the brain. It's all good I'm just happy I've got something to work towards it was getting a bit a bit frustrating I've had a million ideas go through my head I'm like no I'm gonna get sick of that I've got 13 days I need something substantial I've got some big pieces of printed linen that are kits that I've bought over the years and there's like a, a big rhinoceros in there um, and you're supposed to fill them full of cruel stitches they're all kits that came with some stitches um, fat, um what do you call it threads and some beads and things and they are attached to a book a series you probably know what i'm talking about i can't remember the name of it now i had thought of taking one of those but they're epic and i think i'd find that a little bit too daunting i think that's one of those types of projects that you probably want to stitch over say four months where you do a bit each day or a bit each week so yeah not quite the idea i think the peacock is still epic enough but small enough to be achievable and not daunting so there's my rocks Oh, let's put some crystals in. They're very big. Are they too big? Oh, what the hang? No, they're, they're too big. Are they too big? You know what I would love is this little crystal, but in a smaller size. I wonder if I've got time to go to my favourite bead shop at Browns Plains. That's where I got these from, to see if I can get a baby version. Hmm. I'll leave them out because maybe we can do a quick trip to a bead shop. Where's my needle gone? Let's see what other little morsels we can stitch in here. Maybe some little, there's some little green, I've got a green seed bead. Well, it's a, not that one. Well, I thought I did. Is it what's that that's a quite thicker thread that might be good for a few extra flowers I 
Oh well, can't see it at a glance. Maybe I'll just do this linen-y colour. Might be too blendy. Oh, where are they? See, these are all the beads that I would take with me, I think. Let's just do a few little pebbles now. I'm going to need the really fine bead needle. This guy. Let's get a couple of these in place. I might bring the camera right in because these are so neutral. You guys are going to be struggling to see. So let me bring it right down to there and you can see this then. So these are like a little flat, creamy seed bead. The other thing I need to do before I go and get stuck is it's an iron-on transfer. So I need to have a good think about what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll do a photocopy of it. Thank you to whoever that was that mentioned weeks and weeks ago to do a photocopy of it first because it potentially could disintegrate. She's an old thing and whether that ink is going to transfer across for me. That will be the interesting thing. Having said that, I'd be pretty confident I could sketch it if I had to. I'd be pretty confident I could sketch myself a peacock. I don't think it would be, would be too hard. It'll be an abstract embroidered piece anyway. So as long as I got my form of the neck and the head, that's probably the bit that would worry me. I'll work out a, probably a, a feather combination of beads and whatever stitches. And once I nut out that feather, it'll be just hit repeat. So that shouldn't be, it keeps getting caught there. Shouldn't be too difficult, but I think it will. I guess the other thing I've got to consider is it's going to put a dirty big blue inky line on my work. So I need to have a bit of think about that. There is a tiny little flower that was with it. Um, and I've got that as well, which is of the same vintage and era. So I might do a test with that to see, you know, what it's going to do, how it's going to perform. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Something very therapeutic about stitching beads on. If you haven't tried stitching beads, give it a go. I must admit I was a bit skittish on it. I was a bit fearful of it until the Roxy project came along. And you just do a little bit and you sort of build your confidence up and you learn that, you know, you should put two stitches through every bead and you slowly do little, little bits like this is just a little bit. <clears throat> but then, yeah, you start to see the possibilities with beads. I'm going to just put, pop a few on the mat here. 
It's a better way of doing it because then you're not risking flipping the whole flipping container. So now I'm just coming along underneath the swing just with a few little ones because you don't want rocks under your swing. That's just dangerous. Now, I am going to scoot along to this far side of the swing now, just with a few little stitches, because I want to put some pebbles over here, just to extend my ground. And I have one, one left out of these so let's get him down before he gets lost to find myself a nice piece of fabric to put my peacock on. I have to go back through all my vintage hemps and things. I might just end that off because my thread's getting really small so I'm pushing the boundaries of what I can do. Okay. So I just need to build this side up a little bit. It's just lacking. So I might pop in maybe two of those guys. Thread. I don't have any cheesecloth over here. Does it look like it needs it? Should I have? Maybe I put a bit of cheesecloth under the swing, just a little. Just so it feels like it's connected. It softens that white lace. I've only stitched the one bead so I can push him through. Yeah, I think that's good. And I might put a little bit more on the other side of the boulder. Just to soften that right through. And those little pebbles that I have put in will just pop in around it. So let's get that stitched down next. It just helps with the consistency of, um, ow, don't rush Corinne because you'll end up doing damage with this very, very sharp bead needle. And it'll be your thumb that gets the damage. Just popping a few stitches in. I'll be putting more beads in and potentially some more wisps of grass or something because I found this thread here in that box and it's a little bit thicker so I might be able to do you know the other thing about that peacock is I can do some interesting embroidery around it from my book I might um, go through that book and photocopy out any pages that are of interest so that I don't have to carry the book with me. I can just have the 
you know, scrappy bits of paper. Otherwise, it'll get dog-eared as it travels. So just look for some interesting floral embellishment stitches, combinations. I could take some ribbon and do a little bit of ribbon embroidery. The peacock it is. I knew if I thought about it long enough, something would come to me. And it wasn't until I did this, this piece here, this little beehive that it, twig that I really wanted to explore and I'm pretty sure my blue stitchery book has space in it that the peacock would fit that's sort of yeah I'm positive I think it's just behind me. I might grab it at the end of the video. I'll have a flip through and just see that there's a home for the peacock. Not that that's too much of an issue. <clears throat> I'd like to know I've got a plan. I do trundle through life a little bit without plans, but no, I'm going to... No, I don't. I'm always planned. I'm always organizing I'm always yeah I'm the organizer I'm that annoying person that if you went on holiday with me I'd have a schedule in my little brain I wouldn't have it written because I'm not that organized I struggle to do to-do lists it's all balancing in my brain I'm that annoying person that would say, right, today we're going here to feed the butterflies. Today we're going here to feed the crocodiles. Today we're going here to eat banana daiquiris, whatever. I would have a schedule for you. So I'm that annoying person. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. Done. I might just do a few French knots in around those rocks in that thicker thread just to put a little extra something in there. Yeah, got some reeds around the little beehive then the rocks sort of ramble along there's a few little stitches in over here they're not real visible but what we might do is see what this can do for us actually maybe not a french knot maybe i do a lazy daisy stitch i'll stay away from that zone and just work over here because this is the one that needs a little something maybe I do a lazy daisy what's that look like oh I like it fat and plump oh I like that let's do another one so I'm just keeping the stitch quite open. That'll give it something substantial over there. Let's do another one in here. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got three little loopy stitches there. So let's try next to this pebble. 
What do we do? We'll do a colonial knot, I think. Because it's already got a bit of thickness, so I don't want to get it too thick that it overpowers. You can barely see that. It is very much blending, so I don't know if I'm achieving much here. I guess if you were to put your nose there and have a good look, you would see that there is a knot there. <coughs> Anyway, we'll use up the thread. At least it hasn't overpowered the piece. They're just there. That, I think, needs to go with me on the boat. I've got to stop calling it a boat. It's a ship. I remember being corrected once on one of them. Someone said, darling, it's a ship, not a boat. I was like, oh, okay. Looks like a boat to me. It must be a maritime thing. You never upset the captain of your ship and you never upset, upset the chef of the ship or the cook. All right, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I've got just a, oh, I think I've got one more. I could probably downgrade the needle to get a little bit more thread. This could do with some little bees, but boy, they'd have to be little. Might look just like a random stitch. I think that's probably the end of that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Really happy with that. Okay, so let's cover those beads before we have a, a problem. I'm going to leave them sit there because I really believe they are a little bit peacockish. That little thread too <clears throat> can stay there. All right, so what I want to do now, because I think I'm finished this. Let's get rid of my threads while I'm here. Oops, picking them up and dropping them back. Let's put the needles to one side. So let's have a look at the finished little scene. There you go. One swing, one beehive, and some little ground cover elements there. So there you go. All right, let's talk peacock. Let's go. While I've got, will this flower fit in here? No, see that thing is just kicking around. No, forget about it. Um, <clears throat> let's find the pattern. I think it's in, let me zoom up so that you see what I'm up to. I think in the French <coughs> garden box, the pattern is pretty sure here, here we go here we go here she is so <clears throat> there's my color palette that's the first decision that's everything we're going to use for this peacock is there so let's have another look at it we looked at it weeks ago she's an old girl and i like i someone suggested oh, i wish i could remember your name i'm so sorry i do have this as a bit of a test and this is the girl oh, i forgot that it had a railing oh yeah there's my peacock how pretty is that wonder what was attached to it my goodness that would have been nice 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Journal of Stitchery Volume 1. Now I did um, two books. The one I think will be more suited to, let's just go up a bit. I'm just going to do a quick flip through because I have a lot of new people that have joined. So you'll get a bit of a um, feel for Volume 1. So I'd highly recommend if you haven't done the first series of this whole thing, which was last year, first six months, go back and have a look at the prompts. At a glance, I can't even tell you what that prompt is for that particular piece because it just is, yeah, long gone out of my mate. This was the bird and I did too. That bird is Alfred from Lisa Mattock. You can go to her site, for Forage, and purchase the pattern and you get heaps and heaps of bird elements that you can make into Alfred. Um, that was just from a, a transfer book from an embroidery. Can't remember all the details at this stage, but go back to those earlier videos and you'll see me creating this piece. Um, there's a butterfly. We had to do a rabbit. Um, can't quite remember. I think it was a tree. I don't know. Don't know. Fancy. Uh, I don't know. Gosh, this is like a year ago now. The bumblebee and a little cottage. So that book is full. So that is a no-go zone. Let's put that away. <clears throat> this is the book because I did a second one because I found my spine was getting too big on that first one. So I ended up creating a second one. I did a video of scrappy dragonflies. Um, where I make a heap of these dragonflies. So that's in my somewhere folder. I think it's scrappy, scrappy things. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I'm rushing because I can see the clock ticking. I've got three minutes. So this is the one that I think it would fit in. So we've got Mr. Owl. In here I did a big piece that flips out studying mushrooms so they're all different mushrooms so potentially peacock could be as big as that that's not a bad idea because yeah it's gonna have to be look at the size of this peacock yeah okay and I know the back page has room so there we go we've decided our size it's going to be a flip out to that size so I still have room here for a piece that's just pinned there ready to go. So let's bring that over. Um, scrappy Butterfly, that was also a video series. Scrappy Heart. Um, don't know what the prompts were for that. Um, this was a kit I bought from Ann Brooks to make a needle book because I really wanted to see what Anne uses in her fabrics, what she looks for. So that's how this came to be, this piece. I just split all of the fabrics <clears throat> and I added a piece of my own and embroidered the rows and then patched together. So it was like intense, simple, but matched. So that was the theory behind that page. And that's on an old piece of quilt. I wonder if I've got some of that left. That'd be nice to do my peacock on because that would give me a background. Hmm. I've got a gap here. See, that's what was on the other side of the quilt, this red. And I liked that side better. I might dig that out. That's got potential. So I've got a space here. So that's two small stitcheries. This piece I did when I was stuck at home with COVID and my friend uh, Mary Ann delivered me a beautiful bunch of flowers and some um, chocolates and that there, that little piece of organza, you can barely see it, was around the bunch of flowers and that's the piece I was stitching at the time. There you go, there's a random memory. So number three, so there's three small spots, four small spots and then this is a flip out there so that is my peacock will sit in the back there 
So I'm going to grab that piece of fabric out. He will have a home on the back cover. And I've still got one, two, three, four stitcheries that I can do in this book. I just keep throwing random elements. These are from the leftover pieces that I didn't embroider from uh, Henrik. And I thought I'd like to make a feature of them one day in this book. So that's the plan. We are going to do a peacock. Ooh, be careful, Corinne, stop jigging around so much. We're going to do a peacock on this piece of fabric or something. I'll go looking for that quilt piece, I think. We've got plenty of room. I've got some little tests. Now I'm going to have to nut a little bit of it out here in my room because they don't usually give you an iron on the ship and I want to know my peacock is with me ironed, ready to go. I am a little concerned that this blue ink is going to be an issue for me, but nah, maybe not. So that's the plan, guys. Oh, so excited. Thank you, thank you for joining me. Stay tuned for more adventures. So the next videos will be off to the French garden. And I think tomorrow is Friday, so it will be Henrik. Saturday will be Vintage Blend Studios prompt um, English paper piecing. And then Sunday, I don't have anything in the um, program yet for you. So that's where I'll kick into uh, the French garden. And that'll lead back into next week's Henrik, which will be the following Friday. And then again, part two of the English paper piecing on the Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week will be French garden. If I get time to do five videos between now and then, I think I will because I've got plenty to do on that piece. So that'll be my plan for the next few days is to get those five in place. By then you will be through to the weekend and I'll be well and truly on my boat and off and running and working on my peacock. All right, everyone, I will stop rambling. I'm just sort of getting my head straight on how this is all going to come together. Oh, it feels good to have a plan. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day. Enjoy yourselves in your stitching. Bye.